been very talented, great sculler, physically good, um, but I think if anyone's honest, including himself, uh, he probably wouldn't have thought he or known he had that had that in him. And lane one, we have Nico Stahlberg from Switzerland winning the first World Cup earlier this year. A real breakthrough performance for him. In lane two, we have Denmark Sverry Nielsen. Lane three, of course, in the signature black boat that we've seen all of the Kiwi crews racing in. Robbie Madsen. New world best time holder and the winner from the second World Cup in Poznan. And, of course, this man, Angel Fornia Rodriguez from Cuba. What a race it's going to be, I think, in these three lanes, lanes three, four and five. Of course, the Olympic Games bronze medalist from last year, Andre Sinek from the Czech Republic. Switzerland. Denmark and finally, one. lane six, Stanislaw Shabachania from Belarus. Cuba. Czech Republic. Who's also no stranger Belarus. to the podium in the men's single skull. No, a lot of these men are very familiar with this race. Cynic obviously has battled Mahe Drysdale for a number, a number of years. And a really quick start, punching it out there early, Cynic. He's, he's known to have a strong, punchy stroke. Uh, Robbie, probably not as physically strong as Cynic, but very smooth very smooth sculler. I've always admired the way that he rows the boats and absolutely gets the maximum out of his physical potential. Big quads you see there. Yeah, and we saw the semi-final yesterday uh, where Robbie Manson beat the Czech sculler, Andre Sinek and the Swiss sculler, Nico Stahlberg. So really, I think, putting his stamp of confidence coming into this race today. Uh, it, it was all the talk. It was Andre Sinek, Robbie Manson. Who's going to be the one to take it? I think we saw Robbie Manson really going for the confidence and the win in yesterday's race. But what we see quite often from someone as seasoned as Andre Sinek, he will only do what he needs to when he has to. And I think he saw all he needed to do was to get through and he was happy to let the youngster have the win. Yeah, Sinek's got a great history of, of doing that. I know Mahe has come up against it over a number of times. Sort of Sinek just doing enough to get through the rounds. Whereas Robbie and Mahe I know the New Zealand mentality is to go out there and win every race and it would have been a confidence thing for Robbie yesterday in the semi-final to go out there and put that good performance in. You see here starting back a little bit but um, I, have, I have faith that he will get that speed through the middle of the race. And it is the Scala over in lane one. Nico Stahlberg from Switzerland who has this early lead. He's got about a canvas lead over the rest of the field but interestingly sitting down on about 35 he's very tall, looks very long and strong and relaxed. He's got the race leader jersey on. So perhaps like Gamelin, he's aiming to come out here and take the win in front of his home, home crowd. But Sinek now starting to make an impression. Well, it's a very close there through the first 500. A great skull by the by the Swiss single sculler. Obviously buoyed by being on his home water. He'll be very familiar with the conditions and the surrounds. And, and like I said earlier, it'll give him a good confidence boost if he can go through the 1,000 metre mark in the lead. But you can see... Angel, Cynic and Robbie all pretty much in a line there tracking the Swiss man down the course, perhaps waiting for them to wait their, make their move or waiting for the Swiss man to pay for his early efforts. And you can see that now. Robbie and Angel punching out, drawing level with the Swiss man and perhaps Robbie doing a little bit of a mood. With that high rating, he's three, four, five strokes above everyone else and that smooth movement taking him into the lead now. And we can see Nico Stahlberg on screen there looking over his shoulder. He can see Robbie Manson, who, as you say, Hamish, has that slightly higher uh, strike rate, who is moving up into the lead now over Angel Fournier Rodriguez off to his left-hand side. And what a race is this is going to be, seeing them all locked together there at the 750-metre mark. But now Robbie Manson surging ahead. And here, sitting, waiting, I think like a shark, is going to be Andre Sinek. He will be circling, he will be waiting. But do not write this man off because the last 500, when he flicks the switch, he knows how to go. I wouldn't write him off, but I don't think he'd like to be slipping back like this, falling off uh, the, the stern there of of the Cuban and Robbie. I, I think he'd really like to be up beside them. He's got that punchy sprint where he sort of drops it down to half slide and throws strokes at it, but you really need to be within one length uh, to, to, for that to be effective. He's by no means out of the race, but I think Robbie will be very happy with this halfway point 
backing his fitness over the back of the race where you saw in Poland he, he took more and more length towards the line. That's right, of course, in Poland setting the world best time beating it by three seconds. It was set by a fellow Kiwi and Olympic champion Mahe, Mahe Drysdale uh, back in 2013, I believe. Uh, so about five years ago, four or five years ago. So another Kiwi taking that uh, world best time as we're so frequently seeing. Uh, and sitting here, just it, I mean, he looks so comfortable, doesn't he, Angel Fonia Rodriguez? He's just the most understated scholar, but moving very well here. But, I mean, Robbie Manson, he's moving out in the third 500 here to clear water lead. And the, the drive and passion that this guy has. I was talking to him in Henley and he was absolutely gutted to not be racing there. He had a suspected rib stress fracture uh, and was unable to compete in the Diamond Skull and had to watch his, his teammate Matt Dunham take that win. But uh, he really wanted to be here in Lucerne and in good shape because this is this is what counts. This is what's critical. Yeah, Robbie lives and breathes rowing and and to have this success now, it's a, he's had a degree of success in the double but to really sort of blossom I guess in the single scale in, in which is without doubt the hardest boat class to win you know it's, it's the real big men of the sport and for Robbie I guess he gives hopes to, to some of the smaller men out there he's he's a, a, about a six foot one six foot two uh, 90 kilogram rower and, and the rest of these guys are six foot six the Swiss man holding on well there yeah, we can see Nico Stahlberg. He's making a move here and getting himself into the race is Sverry Nielsen from Denmark over in lane three. Uh, sorry, lane two is Sverry uh, Nielsen from Denmark and Shabachania from Belarus. He is into it. But interestingly, look, Andre Sinek, it, maybe it's not his day today. He's back in sixth position. No, I think Andre's just done. And you see Robbie here, it's pride in what you do and he wants to put out the best performance that he can. Irregardless of what his competitors are doing, he wants to get down the course as fast as he can. And, and you need to do that to build confidence in your own abilities, to get an understanding of what your physical limits are. The only way you can do it is to repeat it in racing in those race situations. And you can see him here pushing all the way to the line, rating far higher than anyone else. And this is as commanding as it gets. 39 strokes a minute. He's got two and a half lengths clear water. He is still the fastest boat on the course. And like you say, he is getting from point A to point B as quickly as he can. In fact, it's like he's not even racing anyone here. He's doing a time trial to see how quickly he can get to the finish. Line. And we've done that for a number of years. You can see the Swiss, the Swiss scholar, a, a great performance on home water, uh, sitting in third place. They're relatively comfortable. May be able to get up on Angel there for silver, but Robbie is done and dusted and going for the line. And it looked like we saw Shabachania from Belarus in lane six, just pulling up into fourth place. He uh, he is ahead of the the Dane who's in fifth and. Interestingly, the Olympic bronze medalist Andre Sinek, he is out of it. He is done. But this man, Robbie Manson, I mean, what a season he's had. Two gold medals it's going to be from two World Cups. I can't wait to see what he produces at the World Championships in Sarasota, Bray Denton later this year. Absolutely amazing to come out of the double. And, and I know Robbie thought, yeah, maybe he could be competitive in the single scale, but I think he's blown his wildest dreams. And you can see the Belarusian here uh, upset on the line potentially with the Swiss sculler in lane one. It's going to come down to a photo finish, perhaps, and it will be a photo finish. Wow, what a finish there. I maybe, think maybe Belarus on the surge. Maybe Stanislav Shabachania from Belarus just got his bow ball ahead of Nico Stahlberg, who put in a really great race. 6.49, pretty good time. Once again, conditions not super fast out here, but the times are, are somewhat irrelevant. It's, it's knowing how much power you got out as an individual rower, knowing how you performed against your opposition. And, and I know Robbie, he'll be pleased with that. Noel Donaldson as coach, our old coach, he'll be chuffed. I know he'll be scooting up and down the sideline with a big grin on his face. Try, telling everyone left, right and centre how well his, his, uh, his charges have done today. And we saw a little fist pump there from Shabachania from Belarus who knows that he's just gotten the bronze medal over the Swiss sculler Nico Stahlberg who I think put together a really good race and who's having a great season in the single skull considering the little amount of time that he's actually been in this boat class for and you tend to see with these men that they spend years and years and years in this boat they tend to get better with age and with time but I mean similarly Robbie Manson first season in the single skull like you say he he was hopeful that he would do well but I think his performances both in Poznan and here have really 
exceeded his expectations for how this season would go. And you can see there the Belarusian just getting it on the surge. Uh, tough, tough result for the for the home sculler uh, being pipped on the line and not being able to stand on the podium in front of his home crowd. But he'll take confidence out of out of being in the race, being in the hunt for the medals. And and but what can you say, Robbie Manson? Um, not the most dominant athlete physically, but boy, you have to say perhaps one of the best technical scholars ever to be able to do the times he's doing with the engine, which is very good, but not at the level perhaps of of Cynic, of Mahe Drysdale, of Angel, of even myself, um, but without a doubt putting out times which are the best the world has ever seen. Yeah, great, great calls there, Hamish, and, and thank you very much for joining us um, on air today. It's been great to have you uh, here as our special guest in this morning's uh, slot of racing. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Sarah. It's been it's been great to be here. Um, I can see now the stress of being in the call box. It's actually you build your own we uh, your race here in 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 the commentary position, and and uh, you get quite a sweat up. So it's been great to join you, and um, hopefully I can be out on the lake again in the future and have you call call some more victories uh, for for Hamish Bond and some crew coming down the course. So thank you very much for having me. Cheers, guys. Yeah, look, I don't know if New Zealand need any more gold medals than they're already winning, but 